Hi guys, welcome back to my video blog. Today I don't want to talk about beauty or hair, but I want to talk about something that's becoming increasingly controversial, and that's breastfeeding. This is something that affects millions of women and men around the world. I want to address the poorly understood and forced notion that breast is always best for feeding your newborn baby. This view is unsubstantiated and ignorant and can be a life-threatening decision that you make for your baby. It's shocking how many cases I've read online on accidental starvation of exclusively breastfed babies because the mothers are simply not producing enough milk at all or have delayed lactogenesis. Prior to having my baby Suri, I read so many books, attended prenatal classes, breastfeeding sessions to find out how to best look after my newborn. I didn't know whether I wanted to formula feed or breastfeed. However, after I attended the breastfeeding sessions, it was made abundantly clear to me that breast was best. I was told all the advantages that breast milk had over formula feeding and I was being very selfish and providing a disservice to my child if I chose to not breastfeed. I was so sure that I was going to exclusively breastfeed Suri for a minimum of six months after going to these breastfeeding sessions. I was told that my breast milk was some magic formula that contained all the necessary nutrients and antibodies as well as IQ boosting nutrients that my baby would need. I thought, wow, this is a no brainer. Of course I'm going to breastfeed my baby. The idea of formula just didn't make sense. I'd be protecting my baby from all long-term conditions, diseases, and also making them really clever in the long run. So I had a successful C-section and my beautiful daughter Suri was born. She latched on straight away and seemed to be breastfeeding perfectly. I really thought, wow, I'm doing such a good job. I'm such a good mom. The world is a perfect place. That could have been because I was a little bit high on morphine from the C-section. But whatever the reason, I felt like everything was absolutely perfect. And it seemed to be. But I realized within 24 hours, something was not right with Suri. She was crying inconsolably. There was nothing I could do to calm her down. She was on my breast all the time. And that was the only way I could placate her. But that only worked for a few minutes at a time. I was so lucky that the midwives and consultant realized that she was just plain hungry and thirsty and she needed food quickly. So they gave me the option of formula straight away and I took it without hesitation. I thought this screaming, crying and stress could not be good for her. These raised cortisol and adrenaline levels could potentially harm her and her brain development. So I thought, why be selfish and try and force my ideology of breastfeeding on her when she simply just wanted to be fed. It was ridiculous and eye-opening how much uninvited judgment I received from people who knew I was formula feeding Suri. They thought that I was being quite selfish and just looking out for my own interests. This was simply not true. I decided to then do my own research and find out whether breast milk really was the holy grail to feeding your baby. I was shocked by the number of accidental starvation cases of newborn babies that are exclusively breastfed. These babies can end up with long-term neurological disorders or these babies can even die in some cases when their needs are not addressed soon enough. The risk that I could potentially have not produced enough milk for my daughter was never told to me before I had my baby. I want to raise awareness about this and want mothers to know that there is a danger that they may not produce enough milk for their baby. Here are just a few examples of clinical research showing breastfeeding risks. There are many, many more than this, but I've just narrowed them down for you. In a study of 280 mothers that were closely monitored in hospital and given lactation support, 22% of them suffered from delayed lactogenesis, so delayed milk production. In these mothers, there was a sevenfold higher risk of these babies losing more than the recommended 10% weight loss. Severe weight loss in babies, which is anything over 10%, is associated to severe dehydration. This causes hyponatremia, which is high sodium levels in the blood, which causes water to leave the brain cells. This results in brain shrinkage and permanent brain damage, such as seizures, paralysis and cognitive damage.
In another study of closely monitored babies in hospital, 10% of all exclusively breastfed babies developed excessive hypoglycemia. This statistic increased to 23% for all first-time mothers. Glucose is the main energy source for a baby's brain. Low glucose for prolonged periods of time causes brain cell death and permanent brain damage. This association of hypoglycemia and cognitive impairment was shown in another study involving 1,395 babies. In the Breastfeeding Medicine Jaundice Journal, 10 to 18% of all exclusively breastfed babies developed starvation jaundice. There is also an 11-fold higher risk of hospitalization in exclusively breastfed babies due to underfeeding and dehydration. So both hypoglycemia and dehydration cause irreversible brain damage, which is being seen most often in exclusively breastfed babies. The health benefits, which are so hugely advertised for breast milk, are majorly skewed. They say that breast milk is associated with lower obesity, diabetes, cholesterol, allergies, leukemia, and even increasing IQ levels. But is this really the case? All these clinical studies, which are used to back up the claims that breastfeeding is better than formula, have major flaws in study design. The background of parents are often not used, such as mother's health, their socioeconomic background, ethnicities, their weight, these variables mean that the results found were pretty insignificant. For example, the study that showed that breastfed babies were much less likely to become obese than formula-fed babies showed a very weak correlation. A much stronger correlation was actually found in the weight of the mother and the weight of the baby. The heavier the mother, the more likely the baby was to become obese. Studies which took place in South America and Africa, which found that formula-fed babies were more likely to die than breastfed babies, had a major flaw. It was found that contaminated water was being used to produce the formula milk, which was being supplied to the babies. Also, the formula milk was being rationed because of their expense. So the babies were not only being given contaminated milk, but they weren't given enough of it. There is also very little understanding to why breast milk would be any better than formula milk. Human babies are already born with antibodies in place which have been absorbed from the mother's placenta. They say breast milk has antibodies, IgA, which get absorbed into the baby's GI tract but not into their bloodstream. So they're actually not very sure if these antibodies are of any advantage to your baby. So we simply don't have enough evidence to advocate breastfeeding as strongly as we do right now. Sometimes people ask, what are the signs for a baby not receiving enough breast milk? There are two major signs. One is inconsolable crying and one is constant unsatisfied nursing. And it may feel like you're breastfeeding all the time or cluster feeding. In cluster feeding, babies can tend to burn more calories than they're receiving, which can result in fasting conditions and them losing weight. Please don't use nappies as an indicator for whether your baby has fed enough. Babies that are losing over 10% of their body weight can still produce up to six wet and dirty nappies per day. There are also certain risk factors to women not producing enough milk. The argument that in historic times when formula and other food sources weren't available and children were fine being breastfed exclusively surely can't be an argument anymore. We've developed and evolved as a species to save and prolong lives. We've developed the idea of c-sections which save millions of mothers and babies lives every year. We've developed ideas such as pasteurization and refrigeration which again save lives. So why does unnatural mean unhealthy? It just doesn't make sense. Thank you so much for listening to me today. I hope I've managed to raise a little bit of awareness on breastfeeding and the risks involved. Also, I hope that the information I've provided shows you how weak the evidence is for supporting the nutritional advantages of breastfeeding over formula milk. Please let's share this message and help educate mothers on breastfeeding risks and lack of actual clinical evidence on breast milk benefits. If anything I've said resonates with you, please contact me directly on YouTube or Facebook. Thanks for watching and see you next time.